Welcome back to the Black Knight Podcast, hosted by me, McKaylee Malam, where I'm joined by my co-host and producer extraordinaire, it's Jonathan, hailing from the US of A. Hello, welcome back, everybody. So this is episode two of the revamped, rebooted, rejigged, redone, rewired Black Knight Podcast. And today I'm recording from the Black Knight headquarters here in Carlo, where most of the staff are not present because, well, you know, they, we've got these big offices and no staff in them. Uh, well, there was a double bank holiday. It was a bit of a hangover from that, maybe. <laughs> true, true, true. And it is, and the weather today is not very Irish. The sun is is shining. It's a beautiful day to not be in the office. So I think working from home today and being able to kind of run outside into one's garden as soon as you're finished makes a lot of sense. As we mentioned last time around, we're still hiring. So keep uh, if you're interested in, in joining our technical support team, head on over to blackknight.careers where you can learn what it's like to, to work for us. It's wonderful. We're amazing. You, you want to work for us. It's the best job I've ever had. And I'm not just uh, saying that because you're because you're the boss. Well, as long as you're happy. So what's going on at the moment? Yeah, this is this I think is going to be probably one of the biggest topics for most of us uh, in Ireland and I, probably globally for the next next while. Latest projections over here saying that inflation could hit around eight percent which is apparently the highest it's been since the mid 80s now un unfortunately i'm old enough to have a vague recollection of the mid 80s unlike you jonathan you for you the 80s is something that you consider as being historic i think but yeah this is going to be a problem because the yeah the costs costs for a lot of stuff are just going to is just skyrocketing we we all know that petrol and diesel prices went crazy in the last few weeks with prices at the pump going to over two euro a litre which i'm oh, sorry why am i getting not sorry one second my phone is making noises i'm sorry sorry about that so the, with the inflation the petrol uh, the price of petrol and diesel at the pump has gone crazy it's, it was up over two euro about a week ago it has come back down a little um, but it's still crazy high. Other costs are, are skyrocketing. So electricity, gas, and other utilities, the prices are going up at a crazy percentage. And I heard earlier today as well that a couple of the mobile phone networks are also looking at, at upping their prices. So this is going to hurt. This is going to hurt us all quite big, big time. So what's that mean for us? Well, for us in Black Knight, we use a lot of electricity because we have offices um, here in Carlo. Plus, obviously, we have lots and lots of servers and other equipment that all use electricity. So the the price of electricity is going up. It doesn't matter what we do. There's no way to really avoid that. So we're going to at the, currently some of our team are looking at because those costs, just trying to work out what is the sanest way of dealing with, with with this but it's not a cost that we can completely absorb we just it's just impossible so there's going to have to be some price adjustments for some clients i suspect well and i mean everybody's paying more across the board for everything i know even here in the u.s inflation is really bad i mean things are or even our weekly grocery shop has gone up substantially it's like this is we're, we're reliving the 80s. So if we're having a Cold War type situation that the threat of global thermonuclear war is back on our on our radar. We've got the um, inflation levels of the 1980s. Now, hopefully we can avoid the unemployment levels of the 1980s because those were truly <laughs> depressing. And um, yeah, it's we definitely have an 80s theme this week, don't we? <laughs> Yeah, it's not. It's not good. It's not. A, I mean, the eighties was not a was a decade I, I could quite happily forget about. Thanks very much. But yeah, it, it, we'll see. Well, hopefully, hopefully, some of these things won't be as bad. But it is. It is a cause for worry because the the pricing for things like power it's not static. I mean, it keeps going up. Well, so, and and 
how I, I, I'm not familiar, how much of Ireland's energy, oil and gas comes from Russia? I'm not sure, but the, the problem we're having is, this is the bit I don't understand, and that, that's just literally because I literally don't understand. The renewables, are, renewables energies, renewable sources of energy are powering a fairly high percentage of our electricity. Right. So I don't understand why the electricity companies are increasing the cost to consumers, because if you're getting all your power or a very large percentage of your power from wind, for example, it doesn't cost you anything extra because I mean you're not paying for raw material, it's wind. But for whatever reason, the, the prices are going up. As for the Russia impact, I don't know what the percentage is, but we're not directly reliant on them as far as I know. Look, we'll we'll be. This is not a topic that's going to go away. We'll be talking about this a bit further over the next while. So, what have you been working on recently? Well, well, the big thing this week is we launched a promotion for .cat domain names, the official so who, domain name so what, of Catalonia. So what is, can you tell us about .cat? .cat is not a domain name for cats, uh, because the Catalan people have reserved it for websites and online stuff related to Catalonian culture. And so anybody who has a connection to Catalonia can register a .cat domain name. And for the next few weeks until May 5th, we have them for just five euro. For the first uh, for, year. For the first year, excluding VAT. And which is a great deal, because normally they're very expensive. So I've got Michaelia.cat, because of course I do. Um, mm -hmm. So they originally when .cat launched, they were quite strict about who registered the domain names. But I think at this stage now, they're taking a more kind of pragmatic approach. It gives money, it, they, they, they use the money from the domain registration fees to fund a load of stuff in Catalonia. So yeah. as long as you're not doing anything untoward with the domain names, they're not that pushed about it. Well, amusingly, if you go to Nyan.cat, it plays the Nyan Kit animation, and they translated the website to Catalonians to qualify to use it. It's not Catalonia, it's Catalan. Well, I, I don't know. Or that. maybe maybe it is Catalonian in, 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 in that weird English language of yours. I do see the Nyan.cat thing, but where do I get? Pick a language. All oh, right, they do have a Catalan. <laughs> oh, my God. Now, I mean, there's a, um, look, I mean, Doc, Doc Cass has had pretty good adoption with a lot of Catalan businesses and people, local institutions. I mean, it's interesting looking at what local businesses do in some of these areas where they have their own domain name. So like I was doing a bit of research there last week for an upcoming holiday in Wales and found a load of uh, tourism related websites were using a dot wales domain which i thought was kind oh. of cool oh nice so that's a good, good use of that at finding uh, any doing the dot coomery domain name well as i was navigating in english no i mean if i i, I might let me see do i know many well I, I only know one welsh speaker and i haven't really spoken to her in about 20 years i would assume that the the Cymru ones are being used more by Welsh speakers. It's I mean the thing with the thing with Dark Cymru and Dark Wales is, you know, it was never really about volume. It was always going to be about, you know, filling a filling a gap. And it's the same with Dark Cat. I mean, it's not you know success for Dark Cat was was getting businesses and organisations to use use the domain extension. You know, it doesn't, right. It's not. It's not compete. These are not domains that are competing against .com or .es or .fr. And so, uh, and on the topic of domain promotions, we just inked a deal with Radix, and we are now offer. We were we were offering Radix a select few Radix domain names on promotion until the end of the, this month, but we've now extended it to the end of the year. So you. So can which domains are those? So you can get a great deal on dot .website, dot .space, dot .site, dot .tech, dot .online, dot .store, and dot .fun. 
most of them are under five euros. The reason we wanted to do this promotion last year was we wanted to offer better pricing on dot store because that, that domain has become very popular. So right now you can register a dot store domain name for four ninety nine for the first year, excluding VAT, which is a great so deal. So have you registered I'll... any of these domains yourself, Jonathan? I have. I have a few dot store domain names and I think I have a dot space domain name as well. Yeah. Okay. I, I have too many I have too many domain names. No, you can never have too many domain names. You can just have the right amount, <laughs> which is always higher than what it was previously. Well, you know, it's uh it's like the human centipede of domain registrations. You pay me a, a salary and then I buy domain names with it, so you just get it back. Which suits me fine. I'm quite happy with that. <laughs> I mean, I used to be one of my company's biggest clients. I'm not anymore, thankfully. <laughs> I have, I have kind of, I have restrained myself more. I'm spending money on other things instead, like um, concerts, Hans Zimmer concerts. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, a few of us actually from the team ended up going to the Hans Zimmer concert in Dublin this week, and yeah, it's. It's interesting to see, you know, live in person things coming back. I mean, after after two years of general kind of weirdness, like I was at a concert last year. I think it was in like oh, September, October of last year, and it was that kind of weird time where there were still some restrictions in place, and everyone was confused about which restrictions were were applicable in what situation and I think there was also kind of a general reluctance to go to things because stuff was being cancelled left right and centre whereas the other night the three arena in Dublin was completely sold out the place was absolutely packed it was jammed so was there I think I think the capacity of the three arena is about 10,000 or something so it was absolutely packed and this week Paul my business partner our CTO he's over in Germany Cloudfest and tomorrow, a couple of teams will be attending the Guaranteed Irish Awards up in Dublin. And one of our staff is a judge on the in the tourism category, correct? Yes, we're, we're so we're one of the sponsors for that event because we we like um, what Guaranteed Irish are doing. So we we stepped up to help sponsor that event. I mean, the thing with sponsorship is there's two types of sponsorship. There's sponsorship for very kind of commercial commercially backed and commercially run events where the event organizer is, is doing it as a business. And then there's um, ones where it's more kind of, that's the only way that that organization has to actually generate any revenue throughout the year. And in the case of Guaranteed Irish, we obviously pay a membership fee, but they get a certain amount of sponsorship for events, which helps them to run uh, a load of stuff for, for member companies such as ourselves. And I think they're a great organization and happy to support them. So Cloudfest also this week, so that'll we'll see now what um, kind of stuff comes out of that. But I've seen people posting photos and everything, so it seems to be fairly busy. The ICANN meeting in The Hague in June is meant to be going ahead as a hybrid meeting. I have no idea how well that will work out. At the moment, I'm probably going to be going. I'll see. Down the street for you, so... Well, okay, by American standards, yes. By Irish standards, no. I wouldn't consider The Hague just down the street. And then maybe we're, we're looking at probably attending NamesCon in Austin, Texas. I think that's what, at the end of August, beginning of September? Yeah, it's the, I think it's the first week of September. Yeah, so that, that could be interesting. As long as they're talking about domain names. If they're talking about other digital assets, I won't be too interested. Yeah. It's a well, it's a long it's a long way to go if it's all about NFTs. I mean, look, NFTs I think are an interesting topic, and I think there we, it might be worth our while at some point to get somebody on as a guest to talk about NFTs. Yeah, but I'm not. Look, I can't. I'm, I'm just. I can see a use case for NFTs. I can see a use case for blockchain, but I, I think there's a lot of stuff going on in the kind of NFT space at the moment, which is a little bit. Concerning. dubious let's just say i mean maybe you know it's it's one of those things where you know if you've got tons of money tons of time and you want to play around with these things that but if you are looking for a surefire way to i don't know 
guarantee your retirement fund, I wouldn't be just putting money into NFTs. Right. So. Okay. What else is going on? So oh, the, the Rebel uh, Spirit Awards. Yes, Rebel Spirit Awards. So this one, well, Rebel Spirit, Cork. It's based in Cork. It's a, it's a, it's a Cork-focused event. And as I'm from Cork originally, I'm very, I'm very Cork. We're sponsoring one of the categories, which is the one for the what are we calling them? The non-Cork businesses. The right. What, what is the term they used for it? He came up with a term for it, which I thought was quite funny. It was, oh yeah, a nod beyond Cork. There we go. <laughs> a nod beyond Cork. So, you know, the rest of the country does exist, but we won't talk about it too much. For those outside the Republic of Cork, right? Exactly. Well, have you, you haven't even been to Cork yet, have you? No, not yet. All right. So, th- so on your next trip to Ireland, you'd have to go to Cork, at least briefly. I'm ready and waiting. I mean, if we can just kind of show, we can point you in the general, uh, general direction of Cork and say, look, there you go. So the... The finalists in the category we we ended up sponsoring is Two Kilometers From Home, which was one of those sites that I think somebody threw together as a kind of a side project and then ended up being used by people all over the world. Nearform, who are the company that built the Irish COVID app. O'Neill's Sportswear, who stopped making sportswear and went off making scrubs, as in not the comedy, but as in the, the clothing that people in hospitals wear. So you're not a Scrubs fan? No. No? Okay. No. We'll, we'll have to have a conversation about that at some point. Why is why does Jonathan have a bad taste in TV shows? Um, hey. Uh, I see the movies you watch on a nightly basis. <laughs> oh, that's that's intentionally bad. I mean, I, I choose really bad movies to watch just because that's what I want in the evening. You're a glutton um, for punishment. So then, and then another lady, this Alison Spittle's co-video party, which was like a, how do you describe it? A online group film screenings. It's kind of an interesting idea. You know, watch, watch, a, watch a film with friends. I don't know if you've ever done that, but it's actually quite good fun. And then the last one is the Feed the Heroes campaign, which is really cool. So they, these guys organized food for frontline workers. Oh, that's really cool. Basically. That's that's worthy. So they got two hundred over 200,000 meals to frontline workers. Wow, that's a that's a lot of chips. Yes. It's a lot of it's a lot. They raised over one point four million from around nineteen thousand unique donations. Wow. Got food to staff in hundred and forty three different sites, including hospitals, national ambulance service, nursing homes, community test site, the GP surgeries. Yeah. It's it's a very it's an interesting one. It was so I remember when these they they launched that. It was just one of these things, you know. A couple of guys got together and went, "Hey, this 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 problem this could be this might be a problem for people. How can we fix it?" You know, they came up with that. Um, I mean, if you look at you know the things like I mean, at a larger scale, what's his name, Jose Andres, with his uh, kitchen thing, he's been doing that in the U.S. and elsewhere, and he's now moved that over to Ukraine, which is interesting. Hmm. So that's so. Those were the kind of the big ones. Those are the big news stories at the moment. Another one which we came across, which just you know, like an interesting idea, was this website that somebody set up so that Irish businesses and people can share uh, promotions and um, things like that to help Ukrainian refugees. Private or private? I don't know how you pronounce that. I can speak Russian. Huh. Priv or, or Ukrainian rather. Privet or private? Or, yeah. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. P r y v i t dot i. Yeah. It's a very candy little website. That's a nice idea. It's a nice idea. But there's there's been there's been a massive influx of Ukrainian refugees into Ireland over the last couple of weeks. The government is predicting that there will be a, a much larger number than we originally expected. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out over the next few months. But with the inflation and our already existing issues around housing, it's an it's going to be an interesting few months. They get crowded. Well, that plus um, there's concerns as well around um, food security. There's concerns around things like where are we going to get flour to make bread? So if I go back on a low-carb diet, it'll be fine. (laughs) 
but you know they were talking about how things like pasta prices could go up by some crazy percent no not the pasta there's a lot no well it's well we'll see what happens i mean a lot of this stuff is very much up in the air at the moment. yeah but you know we'll see okay so what else is anything else going on that we should talk about do you think? well on the topic of the the rising energy costs for data centers let's talk about data centers because there's a lot of misinformation in the irish media about data centers and what they actually do and what kind of energy uses they use and what kind of you know there's a there's a movement against data centers that doesn't really seem to be founded much in reality more just in in sort of party political rhetoric of people who are against capitalism in general so what are what are some things you're seeing about data centers that are very you know like make you roll your eyes and go that's not true i know i run a data center i think the biggest one for me is that people assume that data all data centers are used by amazon and google right and that everything that amazon and google and probably to a greater or lesser extent facebook aka meta is all about surveillance of some kind right and uh, it, the, you know this i mean, to start with while yes you know some some online advertising online services do collect a huge amount of personal information or at least it is questionable whether or not they need to collect as much information as they do, and one could get into an entire kind of philosophical thing about that. That's only companies that are operating in a particular area that are doing that. The vast majority of companies that have, that are using data centers, in other words, most of our clients, are not doing that at all. I mean, they're they're running websites, they're running email, they're running online services they could be running like we have clients who are running the the hr systems they use for for businesses are running into that clock in clock out systems there's um systems that are used for oh, i don't know by airlines by public by transport entities uh, there's video streaming services there's you know there's so many different different services that for businesses and personal use that are, you know, they need to be connected all the time to the internet. They have to go through a data center. Right. And then there's things like, you know, all those um, ISPs or uh, community ISPs that need to get connectivity from, you know, small little towns and villages up and down, up and down Ireland. We need to get that connectivity back up to one of the major hubs. So, you know, you'd be talking like Dublin Corp, whatever. They also have to put to, put equipment into data centers. So, like, even for, you know, for, for you, if you were sitting, sitting in your home or your office somewhere in Ireland or anywhere else for that matter, and you wanted to, to fire up a Zoom call or anything like that, you know, this, the, that internet connectivity runs through data centers. Right. And I know that... And it's, and I, well, it's like saying that just because just because you can kill somebody with a car, all cars are therefore weapons. Right. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's it is it's a gross oversimplification. It's also one of those things where there is a lot of confusion because I mean people don't understand technology. I, mean, I think this is part of the problem that the average the average person doesn't really understand what how a lot of this stuff works behind the scenes, which is fine. I mean. You don't need to. I don't understand how my car works, and I don't really care. Um, so I suppose there is this kind of thing where it's you know they, they, that it's some people have kind of latched onto that, and it's part of their their political platform that to kind of push back against this these you know against big tech against these big companies. But you know we're not we're not a quote unquote big tech company. We've got about 50 staff. We're not like a, a Google or a Facebook. And a lot of our clients wouldn't be either. Right. I mean, it's tarring everybody with the same brush is not doing anybody any service. Well, and, you know, yeah, we may be a small company, but even we run multiple data centers. And, yes. 
even bigger companies come to us for access to, to data centers. So it's, it, it, you know, the data centers provide the plumbing that makes all the internet things that you do on your smartphone and, and, and your workday work. And this criticism that, you know, that big tech is living in this big black box in a anonymous warehouse gathering all of our data so that it can advertise to us is just not completely true and it's very irritating to hear these talking points repeated well I mean, it's 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 annoying because i mean ultimately look we've got what fifty thousand plus clients i mean not sure how many are active these days but i mean it's you know it's quite a large number so let's say the population of a medium-sized town or a small city across the that client base there's going to be companies that are operating in a whole range of different things but there's everything and anything i mean there's hotels there's guest houses there's bars there's corner shops there's butchers there's bakers there's even probably a candlestick maker there's a lot of different businesses that are just running websites and email and a few other little bits and bobs there's not they're not doing anything particularly particularly weird or crazy or big or complicated they're just you they're just existing online and over the last couple of years we've seen how the importance of online has 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 risen i mean with you know more and more services only being really available online you know it's i think it saved a lot of businesses over the last couple of years we've been able to switch from purely in person to online or hybrid or whatever i just find the criticism i don't have a problem i don't have a problem with somebody if you want to say you know that data centers do x y and z if x y and z is factually correct that's fine like i'm not going to turn around to you and say data centers don't use power they do use power i am however going to have a problem with people saying that data centers are going to be the cause of you know brownouts or blackouts nationwide well uh, and, uh, because and on that topic let's talk about the biggest myth about water cooling and how there's this big fear that water cooling data centers well, is going to starve uh, ireland well, of water <laughs> well i mean the water cooling thing is, is kind of a weird one so first off why do companies build data centers in in ireland or iceland other parts of northern europe because it's cool and the reason for that is we have what's it's, it's the ambient temperature outside it's it's quite cool it's not particularly warm it's not particularly humid you know, the air is relatively dry and it's at a temperature that isn't going to cause you major headaches and it doesn't get too hot or too cold so what that means from a practical perspective is that if you're running a data center here you're not spending huge amounts of money and power to cool the air in the data center so that the servers don't get hot because hot servers are not happy servers they do weird stuff if, they, if you do that so a lot of like for the data center we operate here in carlo most of our electricity apart from the electricity that we use to power the servers themselves the only the rest of the electricity that we use is essentially to clean the air to make sure there's not you know dust dust particles and what have you um, are not going into the servers because again servers plus dust not good but we wouldn't actually be cooling anything you know cooling cooling air is, a, is an expensive operation so like if you're running a data center in i don't know texas for example you're going to be spending a lot of time energy and money on cooling because it's hot in texas in the summer and like Texas in the summer I've been there, it gets up to 40 odd degrees, probably more, uh, obviously in centigrade. Whereas here, you know, we don't do that. So, I mean, the, we, you know, you could use water as a cook for cooling, but generally speaking, you wouldn't. Most companies in Ireland don't. I mean, there's a, this thing that, you know, companies are going to be using huge amounts of water. And the thing is, I mean, maybe even if they are using water, how much of the water are you going to be using is going to be fresh like there's nothing to stop you reusing water and there's an entire conversation you can have as well about how you could you know look at integrating data centers into into the kind of the, into the bigger kind of ecosystem within a town or whatever and so you could take that 
know, that the heat output coming from the, the data center and channel it somewhere productive. Like I've seen, you know, there's a lot of companies have been trying these different things out, but this, it's it's just it's very easy for them to say, oh, you know, data centers use lots of power. Well, and 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 that yeah. on on that topic, it's in it's in your best interest as a as an owner of a data center for the data centers to work as efficiently as possible. You don't want to use lots of power. You don't want to use lots of water. No. You don't want to move lots of air. You want it to be efficient no. and. This idea that well, it's, I mean, power power costs money. I mean, even before the current price rises, power is a cost. Right. So, like, we would we would recycle and replace and swap out equipment often, not because it's reached end of life in terms of you can no longer use the equipment, but the difference is that you know that that the equipment you're using is much more efficient, and that the newer equipment is more efficient than the older equipment. I mean, even here in the office, when we we did we we completed a, an overhaul of the office uh, in the middle of a pandemic, yay, great time! All of the lighting is now motion activated. <laughs> so what that means is you're not leaving lights on in parts of the building that aren't that where, where there aren't any people. <laughs> like even up here, I'm up here on the first floor of the building, and there's a couple of other people up here at the moment, but over lunchtime. Uh, they, they'd all have gone out. So the, all the lights went out except for the, the light in my office yeah, that, because I was still moving around. Yeah, that was fun when I was there in December. If I was very still for a very long time, all of a sudden the lights would shut off. I was like, what? what? <laughs> yeah, but the, but the point is, I mean, why would you pay for lights in a room where there's no... Exactly. It's silly. I mean, it's, a, it's, it's, it's wasteful. I mean, even things like the... The, the monitors, like years back, we would have been using those great big ones with, you know, actual tubes and things in them. And now switching over to the flat screens, um, massive drop in the, in the electricity usage. But, you know, the point being, as you say, look, from our perspective, efficiency is also, it, is, it has a direct impact to the bottom line. So it's in our interest to keep those to keep those costs as low as possible because you know we're dirty filthy capitalists and we like to make money and paying the power company is not good well and i know personally i i have a server in black knight's data center and i've had it in there for a few years now and power is not even something i think about you know it's i just know that it works and you know whatever con contract i have includes it in it and so yeah, I don't know what point I'm trying to make. It's just that these things, they are a computer in a closet. They work, and they are the the plumbing of small businesses trying to be online. And this idea that only big megacorps are going to use data centers and collect your data and try and sell you things and spy on you is just it's just it's just BS. Yeah, no, I mean, look, it ultimately. Look, I think it's a conversation we can pick up again, uh, maybe in a future episode. But I mean, the there are a lot of a lot of people don't understand what it is that goes on in the cloud. I mean, they still think about the cloud. Like, the cloud was a great marketing gimmick as a term right. to come up with, but the reality is that the cloud is just somebody else's computer. Yep. You know, the when you talk about cloud-based whatever, there's no. There's no kind of clear definition or understanding of what that means for a lot of people. It's essentially it's not running locally. It's not a it's not a, a server sitting in your office. It's not a server under your desk. I mean, basically, it's something that is quote unquote online. That's what it, what it ultimately what it boils down to. And you know, we we provide public cloud and private cloud type services to to businesses then you have like you know the really big clouds like your 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 amazons and your googles and others that are i don't know what they there's a what they call them hyper clouds or something there's some, some term for that but they're all just basically in in a data center somewhere right i mean it's it's servers it's servers and hard drives data. computers in a closet uh, computers in a closet but Data is everything. It's email. It's it's in it's 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 like the, all the stuff that you're dealing with on a day to day basis. I mean, I don't know what it's like for you, where you are, but I assume it's similar to here in that 
you know, you don't go into the bank anymore. No. You know, they want you to do it all online in their app or on their website. And it's the same with most companies. Yeah, my, my bank recently got bought out by a bigger bank. And the new bank doesn't even have branches anywhere near me. But yet, yeah, well, there you yeah go. but you're like, but it doesn't matter because everything is electronic. Everything's online, you know. Yeah. Anyway, so look, I think we're going to wrap this up. Okay. It's always good having these conversations. Let's let's pick this up again in a couple of weeks' time. Yeah. Maybe um, maybe we can get somebody from the from the Green Data Center thing that we're involved. In. Maybe. Okay. Thank you, Jonathan.